Oh, I wish you could look at the screen. Feel like a decent fish. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I love power fishing with reaction baits, flipping sticks. But I tell you what, when you get fish going like this on six pound test and spinning rod, it's so much fun. Where are you going? Oh, that's a nice spot. I'll take those. <laughs> There's many days in bass tournaments I would beg for a fish that size. Beg. I mean, that's money. That's catching fish like that. If I could catch a limit of fish like that every day of every tournament, I'd probably win Angler of the Year and make the classic every year. Guarantee that. But what a nice, chunky spot. Cool. Fishing a drop shot, whether it's vertical or just casting it onto a point like you would any other plastic worm, is. You want to keep the weight in contact with the bottom uh, all the time. And when the weight's on the bottom, when you're shaking a worm like I'm shaking it here, I'm not lifting my weight off the bottom. I'm keeping the, bit, the weight down, connected to the bottom, and I'm just trying to make that worm dance suspended off the bottom. This should be a fish. And then, you know, I'll drag it a little bit or pull it, hop it, do whatever. Let the weight go back down, shake it some more. But just remember, keep in mind, when you're shaking that worm, don't be pulling your weight off the bottom. That's one of the most important things. Keep that weight on the bottom and just shake the worm. You don't have to, I'm probably moving my rod tip six to eight inches, about max. <laughs> it sucks when you call your own shots, doesn't it? Hello there, kids. <laughs> Get you some of that. <laughs> I think he wants some of this, huh? Oh, but there's a lot going on that screen down there. There he's coming up, coming up. Oh, big brownie. Nice smallmouth. We got a mixed bag going here. Oh no, you fought so hard. Smallmouth don't give up till the very end. I don't know how big that is, but he's over two, I guarantee you that. Nice chunky small mouth. <laughs> Alright, rigging the drop shots, very simple. Um, all we're doing is tying a palomar knot to our hook. And for what reason today is just a uh, number one Gamagatsu split shot drop shot hook. Uh, that's called a nose hook. So tying a palomar knot, um, just taking a loop through the eye of the hook do an overhand and then pulling that hook back through our loop that's a palomar knot right there um, typically uh, most of us are going to clip the tag end of the line off and that's uh, a no-no in this in this setup here the the number one thing you need to do is keep your tag end of your line and we'll make it a little bit longer than we normally do um, we'll make it anywhere from 12 inches to 24 inches long so this is a piece you would normally clip off here. Now here's the most important thing about rigging a drop shot is I've got this tag end of the line here. Now after I tied my knot I want to take that tag end of the line, get a clean edge there, tag end of the line back through the eye of the hook but you want to make sure you go through the point side of the hook not the back side. Come through the point side of the eye 
just like so. Pull that tag end down. What that does is now it makes sure my hook is always turned upright, just like so. That's, you want to make sure your, your hook is curled up, pointing up, just like that. Now I'm going to take, uh, today we're using probably about a 12 to 14 inch dropper. Um, so I'm going to cut my line about so there. Here I'm using an extra edge brass drop shot sinker. Uh, this is a quarter ounce. And drop shot sinker's got a really weird system. Uh, the weight, you don't actually, you don't tie it on like you would a common weight. Um, it's got like this little wedge clip in here. And all you got to do is just stick your line through a little opening in there and pull your line tight up in there and it just wedges in that little still whatever we call it here, this little metal clip. So it's real simple. There's no knot tying involved with the weight. So that's basically what we have is a glorified catfish rig. Weight on the bottom, small hook up here. Then we'll take a uh, whatever type of plastic you're going to use. Um, you know, I'm just going to use this bait here, this new Terminator snapback, for example. When we're nose hooking, all you're going to do is take the worm and the hook and just go right through the nose of the worm, just like so. There he is, there he is. Yeah. Ooh. What do we got here? There's no munchkins in this bunch. <laughs> Do you see that? <laughs> I mean, that screen has just gone chaotic. There might be another brownie, who knows? Hold up there, kid. They, they make you earn their, uh, their respect here. Oh, that's a nice spot there. That's a real nice spot. That's a real nice spot. Typically this time of year, what you want to look for, uh, key areas would be humps, creek channel bends, spotted bass especially like long sloping points. Uh, if you can find a, a point running out in the main lake with a break on the end of it, uh, offshore, key piece. Uh, spend a lot of time looking around that. Might help you out. Oop, there he is. There we go. Oh, God. A little spot here. Oh, too full and fat. There again, once again, that's where when you nose hook a bait, 95% of your fish are going to be hooked right in that upper jaw, right there. That's why you got your hook point turned up. So you always get a good solid hook set right in there. No line rub, no friction on the teeth. I don't know how many fish I've caught today. I haven't had to retie once outside of breaking off. So just a great way to fish light line and, and catch good quality fish. <laughs> <laughs>